Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another Get an A and T, okay? You are probably stressing out about your introduction, but I got you. I got three ways to help you do an introduction, but first I want to tell you two things. First of all, if you are totally not starting on your ex, you're on your essay because you don't know what to do for your um, introduction, just skip your introduction, okay? That's my first tip, straight up skip your introduction. Okay, the second thing is um, this video is brought to you by me slash you. If you check the link here, get an A and T-O-K dot com slash free stuff. You can download some help. You can download the stuff I'm going to look at in this video, and then you can also connect with me you can hire me as a tutor on Fiverr. Like hundreds of people are getting together with me all around the world. I'm helping them out. You'll see my rates there. I'll help you out. I won't give you the answers, but I'll help you get some good scores. Okay, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you three different ideas or approaches for coming up with a really good introduction. So the first thing is, like I said, um, if you are having no idea what you're doing and you're blowing days thinking about your introduction, you need to just start. Okay, but I'm going to show you three different ways to do an introduction. I'm going to break all three of these down. And again, if you go to getanantok.com slash free stuff, you can download this document in addition to my exhibition documents. Um, yeah, and then you'll see how you can hire me as well. All right, let's do this. Let's get an A on our introduction. That makes no sense. Okay, so here's my first introduction, and I'm calling this the personal, I can't even spell personal. Okay, the personal approach. Let's make this big because I really like this. I'm not gonna lie. Some of you guys who have had me as a tutor, uh, you guys are throwing this up there. I like this. I think that you guys are doing this well. And so I just wanted to share this. Some of my students at my school that I will not name are doing this as well. So let's take a look at this. Um, what you are gonna do with the personal approach is you are going to um, take the theme, the idea of the prompt, and you're actually going to um, tell your reader the examiner, why you chose this prompt. That's so easy, check this out. Okay, here's my personal introduction. I may or may not have made this up completely. This could all be fiction, maybe not. I love music. It's true. I have been first chair clarinet in my school band for six years in a row. Everyone knows me as the clarinet guy. Totally false. But because of this, I also fall in the stereotype of being someone who doesn't really care for science. In fact, my, it's my worst and least favorite class. Because I like music and hate science, I tend to value artistic knowledge more than knowledge in the natural sciences. Okay, so what I did here was I'm introducing myself and my reasoning for this topic. Then I'm here slowly transitioning to why I chose it. Let's read this. Because I like music and hate science, I tend to value artistic knowledge more than knowledge in the natural sciences. So I'm bringing knowledge in there. This prompt was intriguing to me. Steal that phrase. That's great. Because I know that I am not in the majority. Most people value knowledge in the natural sciences highly because it contains, highly because it, highly because it hi, is, that's a typo. Oh no. It is highly certain, uses inscrutable methods and tools. On the other hand, knowledge in the arts is subjective and changes over time. Does that make it less valuable? Should it be considered lower? Though many people will not agree with me, here's my thesis now, I'm going to put that in yellow, I believe that there is not solid justification for regarding knowledge in the natural sciences more highly than knowledge in the arts. So what's interesting is you can do theses a lot of different ways here. I didn't give you any reasons why. I previewed them right here. But I'm not telling you why. I'm going to do that in my body paragraphs, and that's totally okay because um, if I did a traditional thesis for this, it'd be like half a page long, okay? So let me just break down what I did real quickly. Here, I'm talking about why I chose it. Here, I'm transi transitioning to my thesis and to my answer. And then here, I'm doing my thesis. This is pretty easy. Let's see. Um, do I have any notes on this? Oh, yeah. One thing, um, I don't know if this will work for every single prompt. I don't know if any of these will work for every single prompt, but this one I really like. All right, cool. Let's go to the next one now. Okay, now we're going to look at the direct approach. I came up with this based on just some really bad introductions. Okay, and so what we're going to do with the introductions, we're going to answer this essay question. If we conclude that some knowledge we should not pursue on ethical grounds, how can we determine the boundaries of acceptable investigation within an area of knowledge discussed with reference to two areas of knowledge? So, uh, first of all, what I'm going to do here, you may not want to ever do again, but I would say that this really works because it is going to be so different from other TOK essays. Um, it's totally fine to be concise 
clear, and direct. Check out what I do with the direct approach. I'm going to kind of flip a paragraph on its head. And make this just a little bit bigger. Hopefully I can edit this in. The boundaries of acceptable investigation should always be drawn at causing harm to human life. What have I done there? I have answered the question. I've answered the prompt in the very first sentence. That flips it. Now, I can do a thesis at the bottom, and I will, but I'm answering it very clearly with my approach. What is my approach? Causing harm to human life. Now, honestly, this is kind of a weak answer because... Um, yeah, I'm not even going to get into that. But anyway, okay, so I'm going to give my answer really quickly. Now I'm going to tell you how I came to that answer. Throughout history, morals, ethics, and religions have changed, which have caused the boundaries of gaining knowledge to change as often as cultures grow and die. But the one thing that doesn't change is people. The areas of knowledge of human and natural sciences both provide opportunities to explore times in which the investigation of knowledge was justified and not justified by harming humans. But as can be seen through an exploration of the ensuing evidence, harming and the potential to prevent harm to fellow humans should be the method used to determine the boundary of acceptable investigation. So this is really simple. This is not like mind blowing. But what I've done here is I have the thesis here with kind of like a pre-thesis right there. So in between my two answers of the prompt, I'm telling you something really important, which a okays I'm choosing, and then I'm just giving you a little bit of a preview of everything else I'm gonna talk about. So this is really simple. Just you wanna make sure that you have a very clear answer that's going to continue on as you read the paper. So if you have an answer to this that says, um, don't, it, we're talking about causing harm to human life, and then you, you provide other rules and other boundaries, then you've completely screwed up the introduction. But if you've got your ideas, you can totally answer the prompt in your very first sentence, then explore it a little bit, and then come back with your thesis. That's direct approach. That's um, idea number two. Okay, the last one I'm going to do is probably the classic way of doing it, but I want to show you guys how to do it because I read so many bad introductions. And so I want to tell you how the easiest way, the most simple way, can also be a, an effective way as well. Okay, so this is thematic or title discussion approach. So what we're going to do here is talk about the main idea or the main concept or the main theme it's thematic, of the title. So how do we distinguish between good and bad interpretations? This is one of the essay titles. Um, what I'm going to talk about for this paragraph is the idea of interpretations, okay? I'm not going to talk about anything else. I'm not going to talk about me. I'm not going to talk about the AOKs yet. I'm going to talk about interpretations for about half the paragraph, then get into my thesis. So though TOK is a class focus on knowledge, this title made me wonder. That's a good sentence, phrase. Is there any knowledge that is not connected to one's interpretation? In researching for this essay, I realized that interpretation and the distinguishing of bad and good interpretations is an essential step in gaining and using knowledge. Simply put, there is no knowledge without interpretation. I can listen to my favorite teacher's lecture, for example, for an entire class period, and I can take copious notes, but I cannot accept and use the knowledge disseminated in class until I interpret it in my own mind. Okay. That is my discussion of the, let's do blue. That's my discussion of the theme. I don't think I'm going to come back to anything I mentioned there, but in how many words do we got there? In, hi, I'm back. In 98 words, I successfully brought it up. Okay, now I'm going to go into two sentences that are going to tell you what AOKs I'm using, and it's going to go into my thesis. So what AOKs? The arts and history both implement different methods, tools, and approaches for determining whether an interpretation is of value or not. Ultimately, the level of certainty associated with these are the most important ways of distinguishing between good and bad interpretations. So again, this is my thesis. It's simple, but that could that, that, that could work depending on the evidence. Remember, you don't want to choose a thesis before you um, have your evidence. So have your evidence inform your thesis. And so that's why I say... Wow, my fan is really going off. That's why I say that it is very important to, um, I'm sorry, that's why I say that you can start your paper before you start your introduction. If that's really challenging you, just go ahead, do your research, write your body paragraphs, and then do all of this last. Those are three ways to start your TOK essay um, very clearly, very effectively, and then most importantly, to stop so that you can get to your body paragraphs. Remember, if you want to download the examples that I put up here, you can go to getaintok.com slash free stuff. And if you want to hire me, 
as a tutor. If you want to Zoom, you can you can meet you can meet this. Go to bit.ly bit.ly tok tutor. Just go to Fiverr, find me Pat Freakin Jones. That's my name, um, and that's it. All right. Hopefully tok sucks a little bit less. I'll see you next time. Bye.